Hello racing fans and a warm welcome to our Gallup TV preview show for Tuesday the 2nd of April where we race at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth and can you believe it Easter is done and we're now into a new month and uh, we'll see what's on the go at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth for this uh, Tuesday well there are eight races carded you know, smallest fields, I think the Hollywood Bets Punters Challenge competition will be popular. I think you should get a big entry there with the size of fields. And as always, let's uh, introduce our analyst for Cape Racing, who's none other than Graham Hawkins. And we've just been having a chat off air. Graham, you've had a wonderful Easter with the family. So all the best to yourself and your family and to all the racing fans out there. I trust that they all had a wonderful Easter. About to hit the road for Durban for the next five months, which I'm looking forward to. So, uh, we'll be doing all of my Cape Racing coverage from from KwaZulu Natal going forward. But one final time from the Western Cape, where we've had a wonderful day and a wonderful Easter weekend. Looking forward to this race meeting at Hollywood Best Kenilworth on Tuesday. Uh, very much bread and butter stuff, but an interesting card nonetheless. Yeah, let's get straight into it then. Graham, race number one kicks off the bar pod at 12:30. And it's over 1200 meters it's a juvenile plate lots of first timers here but just as a guide the anti-post betting market number one is at 33 to 10 number three at nine to two horse number six at nine to two seven at four to one and then ten at five to two graham it's i'm sure it's a fair comment when when you say that there's nothing really jumps off the page with the race runners here graham so it wouldn't be a surprise if one of these first-timers has to come up uh, and, and win this. Well, as you said, Dees, there's not much to work with here. We've got 10 runners lining up if they all stand their ground. Uh, 10, give me the good life, is uh, one of those near the top of the boards. Is that two rather indifferent runs, but ready to improve well-bred by give me the green light out of a mare by Western Winter. But I do suspect, like you, that the winner might well be one of the first-timers. Number three, Sail the Seas, the son of Ursin Gedrix, from, out of a good mare. And number seven, Oton Nikwa, particularly interests me, uh, from the Andre Nell stable for Sabine Platner by Ursin Gedrix, out of a daughter of Captain L. Has had a gallop and is doing well at home. Those are the comments in the computer form from Andre Nell. So... I guess the market is going to be the best guide. Normally, I tip a bipod. I've ducked the bipod this time around because of this first leg and gone with a pick six. But any market support for Otaniqua has to be respected. But I think the betting will be the best guide because uh, there's simply not enough for us to work with here. Yeah, and that is it. I think Graham has hit it on the nose. Wait for as long as possible to see if there's money uh, coming for any of these first timers because at this stage of the game, it is none. And we are recording the show. 20, uh, 48 hours before uh, Hollywood Bets Kenilworth on the Tuesday. So uh, it's, it's early recording, so keep an eye on the scratchings. And again, watch the betting, and that could be the best guide with the first time is race number one. Let's move along to the place accumulator. Race number two, it's a maiden juvenile plate over 1,200 meters. This is the way they're betting here, Graham. Number one at 17 to 10. Uh, number three is a scratching. And then we have six at five to one, eight at six to one, Nine at four to one, and uh, Vaughan Marshall teaming up with Bernard Fader on horse number ten. That is trading at five to one. We look at this form line of African Prince Graham. Is that the right form line in the race to follow? Well, again, we don't have too much to work with. Number one, Rama Fokesa, who's been priced up favourite for Richard Free and Mike Stewart, ran second in his third start behind African Prince. He's got about three and a half lengths over Bomber Bay on that form line, but Bomber Bay was making his debut and could show significant improvement. So number six, Bomber Bay, certainly warrants a second look. And then, as you mentioned, number 10, Unsung Hero, made his debut behind Lion Rampart, who also runs on this card in the third race and is an odds-on favourite to win the third race. So number 10, Unsung Hero, well behind Lion Rampart on debut, but showed very nice improvement next time when fourth behind Makazoli. That form is yet to stand the test of time. 8-8 uh, eight, eight on 18 and 9 time honoured are interesting newcomers and uh, they could have a say in the outcome of the race. So again, it's not that easy. Uh, one Rama for Keza has got all the right form, so he should certainly be there and thereabouts and might well uh, be a place accumulator banker. But I wouldn't be rushing to take the early price about him because there could be significant support 
for any of these other runners, Bomber Bay, 8 on 18, Time Honoured and 10 Unsung Hero. I think uh, Brett Crawford has sent out a number of two-year-olds that have gone under the radar first time out and run well without winning, running second or third. And perhaps number nine time on it fits that bill as well. But again, you can't really nail your colours to the mast here because uh, clearly Rama for K is the one to beat. Bomber Bay will probably get closer. But any of those less exposed horses could have the talent to overturn them here. Yeah, maybe time to start to the place accumulator. You're either going to go with number one or you're going to look for cover there in race number two. The big one, the pick six, starts off in race number three. You'll need to get your bets on by 13, 40, 20 to 2. It's over 1,100 meters, and all these young horses are racing at Hollywood Bets Kenwood. Here's another one. It's a juvenile plate. Lots of unknowns, first-timers. Graham, just as a guide, number four at 8 to 1. Horse number five at 7 to 1. Number six at 7 to 1. And then you mentioned Lion Rampart. That's trading at 5 to 10. I think first things first, when you look at the pick six, uh, with all these first-timers in the race, it's not going to cost much leg one. But the way Vaughan Marshall has been, you know, placing the source tells you what he thinks of the son of one world, uh, Graham. And uh, he hasn't disgraced himself against the best down in the Western Cape. That's the young horses. Now, Lion Rampart clearly has uh, a lot of ability one second time up, beating Roman Agent quite convincingly. That form was overturned then on the 27th of January when he only ran fifth behind Roman Agent. He's still a very green horse, is Lion Rampart. He's one of only two that have run before. So when you talk about the pick six in this eight-horse field, you only need numbers five, all is green, and number seven, Lion Rampart, in terms of the pick six rules to have the entire field. And the pick six is my suggested bet, and that's the way I'm going. Now, many will bank a number seven line rampart, but I think with only two horses covering the field, I'm going to include number five, all is green as well. I'm expecting Lampard, a line rampart to get the job done. And uh, I think he's going to want a little bit further in time to come. He's still, a, he's still learning his craft, his number seven line rampart, but he could well pack too much class for this opposition here. But there are a couple of interesting first-timers around, uh, so the betting will be the best guide. Interestingly, there are two by Buffalo Bill Cody. Now, we've seen the, the few Buffalo Bill Codys that have run have shown incredible speed and have won exceptionally well, especially for Tony Peter on the high felt. Now, number three, Southern Express, is by Buffalo Bill Cody. And number eight, Rattlesnake, is by Buffalo Bill Cody. So if there was to be any support for either of those two, you'd make, need to take cognizance of that. Uh, but clearly, in the absence of uh, the betting changes as we get closer to race time, number seven, Lion Rampart, is a clear first choice. Uh, number five, All is Green, is a clear second choice. Those are the only two previously raced runners in the field, and they're both winners. Uh, but respect any market support for any of the first-timers. But just to be safe, in the first leg of my suggested pick six bet, I'm going with the field, which in fact, is just numbers five and seven, although I am expecting number seven, Lion Rampart, uh, to be the one to beat. Well, Graham is safe in leg one of that pick six, including number seven, but backing it up with the only filly in the race, all is green, who will receive her sex allowance as she's carrying two and a half K. That could be a good result for you if uh, the five has to arrive instead of the seven, uh, you know, for the pick six, and then you will drop tickets there because as Graham mentioned, this could be the big banker, a number seven, line Rampart. You only need two runners if you want to be safe in leg one of that pick six. Race number four, maiden plate, 1,400 metres, fillies and mares. Graham number one uh, is at 18 to 10. And then we've gone on to number five, uh, sorry, number four at eight to one. Number five at seven to one. And horse number nine uh, is trading at 12 to 10. I looked at it and um, I don't know if you could shed some light here, Graham. I don't know if Louis Courtois is, uh, you know, engaged to ride for Lance Sherrill and the Sherrill family because he rides number seven and uh, I see Garrett Wright has picked up the ride on number nine. Graham, uh, what's happening there? Not sure, Dees, to be honest with you, not sure. But for me on form... It's an absolute match between numbers one, Ice Rain, and nine, Pretty Precious. I think the best.
betting speaks volumes. Ice-Rain was very disappointing at a short price last time out, but she was drawn out deepest of all, was uh, way back in the early running and never made the required headway. But that was in an open maiden and she was carrying 60 and conceding a lot of weight all round. She's drawn in pole position now, I'm expecting Corne offer to get Ice-Rain into a better position and perhaps she can shed her maiden ticket. But uh, clearly number nine, pretty precious has got a lot of form behind her name. She's only had the four starts. She's got a lot of upside. She goes around the turn for the first time, steps up from the 1,200 metres to the 1,400 metres. I'm not sure about the riding arrangements, but Gareth Wright gets an opportunity coming back. He's been off for a while as Gareth Wright to ride number nine, pretty precious. She's beautifully bred out of that mare by arch over arching. So those are the two on form, but I'm going to throw in to my pick six calculations, number five, Charlotte Bronte. Now, she is obviously the half-sister to Charles Dickens, out of that wonderful mare demanding lady who's produced a host of stakes winners, including, of course, the mighty champion Charles Dickens. She's had the two starts up the straight. She goes around the corner for the first time. If she's got any kind of ability and she shows any further improvement uh, then she could be good enough to turn over these two fancied runners, Ice Rain and Pretty Precious. So as far as the first leg of the pick six is concerned, it looks on form to be a match between numbers one, Ice Rain and nine, Pretty Precious. But I'm going to back them up with number five, Charlotte Bronte, mainly on pedigree as opposed to the form, although she did show some signs of improvement in her second start when only uh, three and a half lengths behind Love Shack. And going around the corner, Charlotte Bronte might be the one that has the most scope for improvement. So for me, in this, the second leg of the pick six numbers, uh, one, five, and nine, my top choice in the race would be a number one ice rain from pole position as opposed to number nine, pretty precious, but there shouldn't be too much to choose between them. Well, talking about jockeys that have been off, uh, Grant for Nikak, while well, he took that lengthy suspension, and this will be his first meeting back. So he will be a man that has been sitting on the sidelines for some time and hoping to have a good comeback on his first race meeting. And I think Graham could be spot on there with the well-bred filly number five at seven to one. That will drop tickets if that has to arrive in the pick six. Race number five, Graham, it's an open maiden for fillies and mares, 1,800 meters the distance. And uh, this is how they're betting. Number three at two to one, five at nine to two, six at eight to one, seven at eleven to two, and then eight at twenty-two to ten. Well, the first thing is the spread of weights, as we've come to know in these open handicaps, uh, maidens. Uh, it's from sixty kgs all the way down to fifty-one and a half kgs, gram. But do we side with the, the horses at the top of the ratings rather than the battlers at the bottom? Is that the way we play it? I think the ones at the top of the weights have probably got the upper hand. Uh, we're referring, of course, to uh, number three, Lickety Split, who was third under a length behind Heliotrope in a similar contest over 1,800 metres, same course and distance last time out. Uh, she was uh, marginally behind number eight, English Mistress, who ran second in that race. I'm expecting English Mistress to finish ahead of Lickety Split again. Well behind them was Sansa Stark, uh, but Sansa Stark does get a slight pull at the weights this time. She's dropped in the ratings as a result of having run fifth, three and three quarter lengths behind Heliotrope in the same race. But she does get the services of Richard Faree. And anything that Richard Faree puts his leg over, we've got to certainly not exclude from our calculations. But the one that might have the scope for improvement and was fourth uh, behind Heliotrope, but only in a fourth outing, and uh, Lucky 13, the three-year-old daughter of the United States, who runs in the colours of Gary Play and D uh, Dave McLean, and of course, that a wonderful winner of the weekend with double grand slam. Uh, Greg Inin is in good form, so number seven, Lucky 13, cannot be ignored. So as far as this leg of the pick six is concerned and this leg of the jackpot, I'd be including all of numbers three, Lickety Split, five, Sansa Stark, seven lucky 13 and eight english mistress i think that's enough to get us through i think they will dominate the race uh, lucky 13 at the weights gets about uh, well get six kilograms from lickety split and english mistress and uh, she gets four and a half from sansa stark and i know although she's held on form on the evidence of the last run i do suspect she might have more scope for improvement so she could turn out to be the value in the race but three five seven and eight 
I'm quite confident that'll get us through race five, this open maiden for Phillies mares over 1,800 meters. Well, that's 40% of the field, Graham, so it goes with the rule. You managed to help us there, narrowing that field down to four out of the 10 runners, and I think you are 100% correct. Anything else will be a big result there. Hoping for a form result, Graham Hawkins, three, five, seven, and eight in numerical order. Then on to race number six, it's a middle stakes for Phillies and mares. The distance is 1,200 meters. Betting here, Graham, uh, number two at four to one, number three at 33 to 10, five at nine to two, six unconquerable lady. She does look like the ideal roving banker in the field. Uh, you know, if you're looking for one, just the way she's holding her form. Uh, she's trading at seven to two, seven at 11 to two, and eight at seven to one. Graham, this type of race, very tough to try and make it you know, four runners or less. Now, this is a field race. I think this is the most difficult race in the card, this middle stakes for Phillies and Mares over 1,200 metres. I think, number one, Monashada can be safely excluded, but when we get to having a look at my suggested bet, you'll see that I've got the field here, so I've included number one, Monashada. I'm not going to exclude one horse from eight. Uh, but number three, Miss Marguerite, is probably the one they all have to beat. She does take a drop in class. She was a good fifth behind uh, Ripple Effect in the Olympic dual states, and then she was beaten six lengths by Double Grand Slam in the Prix de Cup. But we saw on Sunday just how good that form could turn out to be when Double Grand Slam raced away to a comfortable victory in the Uzumkulu stakes. So Miss Marguerite dropping back into this division, despite the fact that she's got 61 and a half on her back, is probably the one to beat. But they're so evenly matched, I can't split them. So I'm going the field in what I believe is the toughest race of the card. Number two, Distinction was a good winner of a last start. Her form over this course and distance, stepping up another 100 metres, is pretty decent. She's had seven starts over the track and trip for a win and three seconds. Japanese Rose is coming along the right way. Richard Faree takes the right from Brett Crawford. They've got a wonderful strike rate. Uh, 12 times Richard Faree has visited the winner's enclosure for money, 29 outings with the Brett Crawford stable. So you ignore number four Japanese Rose at your peril. Five kinky boots will have needed that last runner first after almost a year can improve. Unconquerable lady you've mentioned, very game, very consistent. And uh, we saw that Lady Laidlaw Kaya Stables had a very nice day midweek in Kenilworth. Uh, last weekend, Pacific Green can never be ignored and Lady Lookalike is definitely upset material. So for me, this is one of the tougher races in the card. My top choice with no degree of confidence at all would be number three, Miss Marguerite, head of number two, Distinction, and number six, Unconquerable Lady. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if Japanese Rose, Kinky Boots, Pacific Green, or even Lady Lookalike were li likely to come out on top. So I'm not... I'm not taking any chances yet, yeah, Dees. I'm going the whole lot in race six. Well, you've given us some numbers for the PA, three, two, and six. I'm sure guys will play around that for the bar pot as well. Three, two, and six going to be the top three for Graham. Uh, whatever the results, I suspect that, you know, we know that Monashada will carry the least number of tickets in the exotics. But I think the tickets are going to be well spread amongst the balance of the field here. So you are going to drop tickets regardless of the result here in race number six. So Graham's going the field in the pick six. Race number seven is the Easter Sprint. It's for 200,000 Rand. I see the first prize is 118,750. So it's not a bad payday on the Tuesday at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth for one of these uh, runners with their connections. It's over 1,100 meters. Uh, we'll refer to the best weighted column, which is very tight, Graham, but number one is at 7 to 1, 2 at 11 to 2, 3 at 9 to 2, 4 at 9 to 2. Number five, Dance Variety, has separated itself from the balance of the field betting wise at 17 to 10. Seven Rio Carrari is at 5 to 1 in a small field of seven. That's the way they're betting. It's very tight, you know, we can't use that as a guide. Usually, you know, in these condition races, you, you, you can see horses that, you know, dominate, but it's very tight. Seven and four joint at 112. Numbers one and five are joint at Nelson. And number two, Mufasa at 110. But Graham, you like a horse here. You're going to tell us a bit more. 
Yes, this is the race that I'm naming my colours to the Masters. Certainly as far as the jackpots and the pick sixes are concerned, I'm going to bank in number five, Dance Variety. Adam Marcus is only a runner on the day. His form speaks for itself. He's uh, been a good second in his last two starts. Prior to that, he beat the very decent future Variety. Certainly wasn't disgraced by Thunderstruck back earlier this season and was back-to-back winners in July and August. So he's holding his form really well. The Adam Marcus stable continues to show terrific form. Corne Offer has ridden the source four times for two wins, a second and a third, so he knows and understands what it takes to get Dance Variety home. So this is my banker play for the day, number five, Dance Variety, the Easter Sprint. It is the feature race carrying a healthy stake of 200,000 rands. There are, of course, dangers everywhere you look. It's only a small field of seven, but every one of the other six has a right to win it. Mr. Cops can win it, Mufasa can win it, tough terrain in very good form, a good winner over subsequent in the abdicator last time out. And uh, tough terrain gets uh, uh, four and a half kilograms from dance variety. But on earlier form, if you go back to the 6th of January, uh, certainly on that form, he cannot beat dance variety even at these weights. Icy Blast was fourth behind dance variety last time out, receives three kilograms this time around and could get closer. Elusive Winter, I know he's the big outsider in the in the field, uh, but he's always been held in high regard. It's a tough task for him here, uh, but even he could surprise. And of course, then we come to our champion, Rio Carrari, who's now seven, rising eight years old. Uh, but the day you ignore Rio Carrari, the day you throw him out, that's the day he's going to come through and remind you of, uh, of the kind of talent that he possesses. But we've got to go light somewhere. We've gone the field in the previous race, and I'm happy to nail my colours to the mast here with number five, Dance Variety, in race seven. He's my banker play for the day. All in is Graham Hawkins in race number seven. Number five, Dance Variety, currently the top one uh, at 17 to 10. And if this has to arrive, let's see what Graham is doing in race number eight, where we close things off over 1,000 metres. Betting here, Graham, uh, number four at seven to one, Horse number six at 18 to 10, uh, and number seven at three to one, number eight at seven to two, and number nine is at 11 to two. Uh, Graham Richard Faree is on the favorite here at 18 to 10. You know, I've chatted to him uh, off air, on air. I uh, haven't spoken to you about this, but uh, you've been, you know, around uh, for a long time. Uh, and uh, that number of 338, Graham, it was a big number that Anthony Delpech set, Twa Twa Cut, it's called, by Hollywood. But Richard Faree, the way he's going about, you know, getting that record, I must applaud him because he's just been so calculated and with four months to go, he's under 100 uh, going for that 338, Graham. It's, it's, a, it's a remarkable achievement thus far. Your twa twa kata is actually three three four, so he's yes. only got to get to three three five, uh, not three three eight. But uh, that's all uh, by the by. Uh, he's well ahead of the curve. Uh, the way he's going, he could probably take the rest of July off after Hollywood Bet's Durban July Day because he'll have got there already. All things being equal, no injuries, no suspensions, etc. He's absolutely flying, and has added a lot of interest to the year. His chase to uh, get to Anthony Del Pesce's incredible record of 3-3-4. So Richard needs 3-3-5, and he could well take a step closely here in the eighth and final race. He rides number six, Palo Queen. She's been on the boil for a long time. She was slightly disappointing under Faree last time out. Went heavily back from 7-2 to two into 17-10. to 10. She was comfortably beaten by Cathera. I thought that was a bit of a lackluster performance compared to her previous outings behind Silver Screen. She ran third and second in her previous two starts. But she's certainly got the form to win a race of this nature. But a good thing I wouldn't make her. Uh, Easy Money's got a chance. Wordsworth has got a chance. And Strata. And if you're looking beyond that, number four, Wiley Jack. But I'm going to take my chances in the last leg of the pick six with numbers six, Palo Queen, eight, Wordsworth, and nine, Easy Money. You were suggesting to me off air that I need to include number seven strata as well and bridge the gap. Well, that we can do as well. The upset material in the race is number four, Wiley Jack. But I think Palo Queen will give us a good run for our money. 
But Greg Ennion's old campaigners, you know, the six-year-old girl in Wordsworth who's getting four and a half kilograms from Palaquin, I think his last two runs suggest that his uh, next win, his third career victory, is not too far away. So I'm going to include eight Wordsworth and uh, number nine, Easy Money, who finished marginally in front of Palaquin when they raced behind Kaisera last time out, but on the previous form behind Silver Screen, comfortably held, which suggests to me that Palaquin was slightly below par last time out. I've only included, as you'll see in a moment, six, eight and nine in the pick six, but throwing seven starter by all means because she's holding her form really well. Yeah, I think that'll be it, Graham. I like it. Six, seven, eight and nine. I think we well covered there four out of the nine runners. And I'm in agreement with you. If I had to pick up the horse that's a value, it does go to number eight words, but at seven to two. But let's get straight into your suggested bet, Graham, which is a pick six for the show. And it's up on screen. Thank you, Dees. I don't often tip a pick six, but the, the first thing of the bipod is that dicey. I'm not prepared to stick my neck out at this early stage. Closer to race time, I might well be playing my own personal bipod. But let's go with the pick six because the first leg... Numbers five, all is green, and number seven, Lion Rampart. That gives you the field. The other six runners in the race are all first-timers, and in terms of the rules, five and seven is guaranteed to get you through. Many will bank at number seven, Lion Rampart, and I wouldn't put them off doing that, but I think we'd look a bit silly if there were only two runners in the race from a pick-six perspective, and we left one of them out. So five and seven in the first leg. Second leg, numbers one, five, and nine, Ice Rain, Charlotte Bronte, pretty precious. Ice Rain and Pretty Precious, the two on form, but Charlotte Bronte is the sister to Charles Dickens and may start to improve. Then three, five, seven, and eight. Uh, that's Lickety Split, Sansa Start, Lucky 13, and English Mistress. I think we can go with the form runners there. I'd be very surprised if the winner came out of that court. Ted, race six, the hardest race on the card for me. We go the field. Then in race seven, we bank a number five dance variety. It's not cut and dried. It's a tough race. It's a competitive race. But I think Dance Variety is on the threshold of winning again. Adam Marcus is only runner on the day. And then the last leg, as we discussed, initially I've only included number six, Palo Queen, eight words worth of nine, easy money. But you have persuaded me that I need to add number seven starter to that list. So that's the suggested pick six for Hollywood Best Kenilworth, Tuesday the 2nd of April. Yeah, whatever it's costing going into that last leg, as Graham mentioned, instead of multiplying by three, you can throw in number seven and just multiply that perm out by four. Graham, uh, looking forward to catching up with you as you arrive uh, uh, this week coming uh, back in KZN and uh, looking forward to catching up and uh, safe travels back to KZN. Thank you so much for your contribution for the show and hopefully things fall into place. Thank you, Dees. Good luck. Go well. Thanks to Graham Hawkins on behalf of the entire team at Gallup TV. It is Graham Hawkins, myself, Dees Dynand, and to you, the valued racing fan. Hope everything goes according to plan on this Tuesday where we race at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth. Find all the winners, make a huge profit, and hopefully it turns out to be a lovely, successful day for you. Until we meet again, you take care. Salam Gaslet.